on behalf of the Canadian Society for Civil Engineering and UBC. Welcome. Thank you very much. We set up a series of speakers to come in from a variety of backgrounds and talk on different topics. The reason we brought the mayor in is that it's important for students to understand, you know, the community, you know, that we live in, you know, uh, and where we're going. I've um, grown up in uh, in Kelowna with with a great passion for this community. I got involved uh, just sort of naturally and, and ordinarily because I was talking to an engineering class and people, of course, who would have engineering on their mind. I tried to touch on projects and things that happened that had an engineering component. I uh, used as an example uh, a decision that was made years ago, for instance, in not building stable enough foundations for a parkade that was actually built so it could be expanded. Because they built it modular for a reason, that in time as we needed more parking, I could add another, add another, add another. I mean, not, not way up, but at least another floor or two. They fudged out on the engineering design for the foundations. And so as a result, when we then needed more parking, uh, they had to take it all apart, can you believe it, stored it at the landfill, and so they then had to start all over again and build a parkade. So there was a case of where, uh, you know, had engineering people not just thought about engineering, but also thought about the future, they wouldn't have made that mistake. So that, that's just, I'm sure the engineering class, as they go to class each day, each month for a number of years, are saying to themselves, what precise discipline will I have at the end? Will I become a transportation engineer? Will I get into hydraulics? Will I get into, you know, building concrete structures? Those sorts of things. And sure, they'll apply basic engineering skills, uh, but at some point in time, they're going to want to refine their thinking. In the projects I was uh, outlining at the city, just trying to give them some kind of an idea without selling them on anything, that there may be a lot of engineering opportunities right here in Kelowna. We have this tremendous deficit in younger adults between the ages of 20 and 30. And if you looked at the class here, probably 90% of them were between the ages of 20 and 30. And so I was maybe at the, trying to challenge them to say, don't overlook the obvious opportunity, and that's to get your education in Kelowna, which they've chosen to do, but also to get your first opportunities in Kelowna. And don't feel you have to flee the nest as soon as you have an, you know, have an education. It's nice to hear that the city is aware of some of the issues of uh, youth employment in particular. I know as a student, you know, uh, myself and my family have struggled uh, with that somewhat. To knowing the fact that, you know, that is something that they are looking at and addressing uh, is definitely quite important. I would love to be able to live in the Okanagan and keep the family here, but, you know, if you can't find employment, you know, then that's unfortunately not something that, that can happen. It was $50,000 extra, which of course was more money back then, but still it was peanuts compared to the whole project. Because I am, you know, older than all of the students are was to leave them the message that it's never really too late to become involved in the community as a volunteer. I mean, it's about getting an education, getting a job, having a family, you know, having a good golf score, you know, whatever. But it's also about giving back. And if you start to do those sorts of community volunteer things at an earlier age, you never ever really feel at any point in life you're giving back. It just becomes a way of life.